Greetings, this is a little introduction to my solar power station. This is a standalone off-grid system. There's no grid power here. I'm at a uh, tree farm in the wilds of South Carolina. When I first bought this property, I asked the power company if it would be possible to run power here. They said, no, they weren't anticipating on doing that for a number of years. And I said, well, what if I wanted it so bad I would just pay you to put the power in? How much would that cost? And he said, well, he didn't really know, but it would be about $100,000. And so, of course, that was a no-go. I realized I could do something far cheaper than that. And at the time, I didn't own this EV. I just bought this uh, this year. This is a 2024 Volkswagen ID4, completely electric. and. I needed a way to go from my house to here and then back again with, uh, with no access to the grid. So I decided to build this. Now the first thing you need are electric panels. I've got 12 here. They are referred to in the lingo as PV, photovoltaic. And when you talk about PV power, that is what you're talking about, solar panels. Now these things generate DC power and in various um, varying voltages from nothing to uh, 400 some volts and an amperage from zero to um, about, I don't know, 400 watts or well, 4,000 watts, four kilowatts. Um, so they are, you can't really rely on that. You can't uh, hook up anything to, to a power supply that's not consistent. It's uh, variable in, in every way, including giving you no power whatsoever in, at nighttime. And here on a very late fall day in November, uh, we got very little uh, sun power going on right here. Um, anyway, I built this framework to hold the panels and they're wired together in series that means one goes into the next and the next and their voltages add up that way so that's how you get that high voltage that you need I've got two arrays there's each one is six panels and um, they're both in series so those two arrays go to the equipment shed through these conduits and you can see the wires going in and one other thing is a ground wire that runs down to a, a ground spike that was eight feet long and I started pounding it in uh, from a step ladder way above and now it, here it is only that much sticking above the ground because I didn't really have the right hammer for that so it took me a while but uh, all of the PV, all of the solar panels have uh, aluminum frames that have to be grounded and that comes through this wire right here. And then I've got a second wire that goes into the equipment shed and I'll show you where that goes next. Now the equipment shed is right here and I designed the angle of the roof is the same as the angle of the panels in case I need to put more panels up there someday. Now you have to install these at the right angle for for where you are in the world. Uh, there's there's calculators online that'll tell you you enter your zip code and it tells you which direction to face them and what angle to mount them. So this is the proper angle for my latitude and this uh, the shed's very small it's just the footprint of it is a single piece of plywood four by eight and i i decorated it with this uh, old gas sign and if, since this is my filling station uh, today is november 10th 2024. now my charger for this car one that came with it pulls 31 amps. That is too much for this system. So I had to find a different charger that could be 
uh, you could get, uh, input a variable output for it. And this Grizzly Extreme Edition, I guess it's called Extreme because it has uh, camouflage on it, but nothing extreme about it. It runs off of 240 volts, and you can, uh, there's dip switches inside the box that you can change to whatever output you want. I've got it set at 24 amps, and that's because the output of this system is maximum of 25 sustainable. When you plug in the vehicle, it will, yeah, that's not going to open, I don't have my fob with me, but uh, that's all there is to it. You just, you just take the charger from here and plug it in there. Now let's go inside, show you how this works. There's not much to it, really. Now right now, it's uh, generating power from uh, what little light we've get, we're getting today and putting it into the battery. Now the battery is not one battery, it's two batteries. And they are 48 volts. I've got uh, space for a third. Right now I've got two and I might keep it that way or it might actually come in handy to have a third. Or, um, in this. But uh, they, they're 48 volts and each one uh, is 100 amp hours and um, they communicate with the inverter. I'll show you next. There's an orange wire in here that goes up here and goes to the inverter and that's how these these things talk to each other. Now this is a EG4 6000 XP inverter uh, off-grid system. It could actually be tied into uh, grid power if you have it uh, but it can work completely without it it comes with a breaker for the battery breakers for the load and grid and generator so you could actually hook up a, a generator whether it's gasoline diesel uh, propane whatever um, and and get power there so let's say you had a number of cloudy days and you couldn't generate any power that you needed so you, you could hook up a generator to get it. Now, the system, pretty simple. Let's see if I can really get this on with the camera. Um, right now, it is taking uh, the power from the two solar arrays called PV1 and PV2 and putting it into the battery. Um, the battery is uh, right below you can see the solar array icon which looks pretty much like you'd expect and then below that is the battery and that battery right now is let's wait for it to come up it's sitting at 53.3 okay it's charged to 46 percent of its power right now ideally you want that up at about 100 and my PV1 putting out 183 PV 283 volts and that is about 500 and let's say let's call it 500 watts of power each and that's not going to be enough to run my car today so we're going to let this day be the day that we charge up the battery now from the two these are the uh, the two wires from the battery and then along the line here, they come in from outside are the PV wires, the photovoltaic wires. We've got a, a switch here that turns off all of it at the same time if we need to do something and we don't want to get shocked with 180 volts. But it comes out, comes around the corner and goes up into the inverter, that's PV input. You can see I've got nothing going into generator, I've got nothing going into grid, and then we've got the load. The load is our breaker box. So we've got four wires coming out of that. We've got red and black, that's uh, L1 and L2. And then we've got a neutral, and we've got the green one as ground. And that goes over here to our little breaker box. And there's not much going on here. We've got a mostly 
what I built it for is to power the EV. That's a 240 volt outlet on the outside. And we've got an indoor light here on the ceiling. And we've got an indoor outlet, 120 outlet, down here. I use that to charge a different battery sometimes. And then we've got a, another 120 outlet outside. Got our, our breakers here and that double breaker on the top is what powers the car. So it's pretty simple. Not much to it. I, uh, I also have another little gas sign in here and of course the sun where all this power is coming from. And so far I've been able to use this completely for all my needs while I'm up here in the, at the tree farm and it really works fine. Today, now well, today's a little bit it's cloudy and overcast and we're not getting much solar. So I think by the end of by the end of the day we're gonna have the battery mostly charged up and then tomorrow I will be able to turn it on and then the combination of my two PV arrays and the battery will be able to charge the card about anything I want. Um, they work in about thirds so we've got PV1 providing about a third of the total power, PV2 the uh, another third and then the those batteries that I showed you providing the last third. Now the battery, when the fi battery finally reaches the low limit and shuts off, that'll be the end of charging for the day. Now if I got what I wanted, that's fine. It's, uh, the PV is going to go and charge the battery up again. But if, um, if I didn't get what I wanted, and we'll be just doing it tomorrow. It's no big deal. I don't really have set schedule. Now this area was a was a feedlot. The previous owner hunted here, so he had this all planted in something that deer like to eat. There's a tree stand and he would, of course, they'd come and eat and that's how they would be shot. Um, nowadays, I'm letting the grass grow out here where I don't, where it doesn't matter because a lot of birds nest in there. It's all full of, I think, quail and all kinds of birds nest and all that. But I did clear out this area uh, just to make sure there's no shadows on the arrays because even a smallest shadow really makes a big difference. Um, and that's it. There's your introduction. When I first got started doing this about, a, I don't know, a couple months ago, this is really relatively brand new for me. I didn't know anything about this. And I went online and I did a whole bunch of research and it was very frustrating because there's a, there's a lot to know and you have to size everything for so the the uh, photovoltaic arrays your PV arrays have to be sized for your inverter and your inverter has to be sized for the load you expect and, and you, you start thinking about all that stuff it just uh, it's very daunting at first and people who know about that stuff you know there's a lot of acronyms and um, they're just throwing that stuff at you and you don't know what they're talking about and it's it's um, it's kind of hard to take but with the with the IG4 or EG4 um, 6000 XP it's so simple because it um, there's not much to it and there's all, it, in a lot of other systems you have to come up with all of your uh, individual components and wire them together and they all have to be sized for each other and it's it's uh, it's very confusing, but this one there's not much to it. You just need that inverter, you need your batteries, and then you need the various wires and know how they go together. Uh, the um, the photovoltaic has a kind of a snap together um, type system where these just pop in and out, and so you don't really hardwire them together. Um, and each each panel 
has a negative this is the negative on this one and then a positive on this side and you see here the one the positive goes to the negative of the next one and they just go like that all the way through and then all their voltages add up and that's how you get your 180 volts and uh, yeah well hope this was worthwhile oh and the other question I get all the time is how much did this cost and my answer to that is they cost less than a hundred thousand dollars which was my other option it is a hundred percent solar power which uh, is important to me I didn't buy an EV so I could charge it up with a gas generator and this was it this is this is my option this was my only way of charging this car on this property in the middle of nowhere now I do have backups if I have to say I couldn't get enough power to get myself home uh, it's about 144 miles to get home um, I could if I had enough power to go 40 miles to the nearest charging station then I could charge there and that would work and at least for now I have a house in the city nearest town and I could charge there but that's going to go away very soon when I get that place rented out so uh, I do have backup plans um, so far though I have never had to use them I have d done all my charging and gotten all the way home 144 miles strictly on the power of the sun all right hope you enjoyed it and uh, it's fun making this video